Pat Fitzgerald. Susanna. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Now, you've been giving me wonderful primulas over the years. Yes. And You're the only one who will take them from us because everybody wants the fancy little bedding plant prim primrose. I'm joking, but <laughs> almost. <laughs> I, I'm kind of a traditionalist then. Yeah, we, we produced these back with Excuse Joe, me, Maya. Joe Kennedy back in, ooh, whoa. Maybe 2008, 2009. These ones, or both yeah, of these? both of those. So so this one, this kind of yellowy yeah, one, and then this one creamy pink one. Gall, which, this is Money Gall. This is Money Gall, yeah. Okay. And we named it Money Gall. Um, at the same time, President Obama was at his height of fame in, in Ireland. So we dedicated this one, um, and it was introduced into the White House garden um, during a visit uh, to by uh, to, to Enda Kenny and his wife. Okay. Um, and they also the one beside it you coincidentally planted is one called Clada. This is Clada. Sorry, I'm wrong. Drum Cliff. Drum Cliff. Drum this Cliff. is Drum Cliff. Yeah, and we okay. had named that one in 2008 or nine, as it was our first of what we called the Kennedy Irish Primroses. They were bred by Joe Kennedy. Joe is originally from Carlow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's now. Uh, in retirement in Ballycastle. He worked as a NHS dentist for many years, but his passion and hobby was breeding these dark foliage primroses, which are unique to Ireland. They're wonderful, yeah. the dark foliage. Yeah, so no, remind me again, contrast. the name of this one again this is... This one is Drum Cliff. Drum Cliff. It was named after the final resting place of William Butler Yeats. So that's why we named it that. It was the first in the Kennedy Irish Primrose series. Then we had one called Inni Shree, which was the second, which was... I don't know if I have that one here. No, you don't. It went out of existence. Oh, no. Um, but we have it back again and we'll produce it again. We used it at Bloom, I think, 2000 and... Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> one of the Bloom, um, it was the plant of the show, the... Um, it was given to anybody who was um, coming from the UK or other European countries who would have had Irish heritage. They got yeah. one of these Kennedy Irish primrose in a little box. Oh, and lovely. it was finished free and we did a beautiful little box with um, with the poem on the back. And a of Inish Free, the poem Inish Free. In yeah. the Lake Isle of Inish Free on, on the back of it. So, you know, we, we put a lot of effort to try and popularize these traditional species uh, type primroses because all of these came from Elizabethan and Victorian breeding lines in Ireland. So there were actually several hundred years of breeding lines that Joe Kennedy conserved and we put them into a collection called Kennedy Irish Primrose and then we said oh maybe the Kennedy thing is not working so we called them Irish Primrose so we had a a big investment in promoting them and a series and we had to stop sometime in 2012 13 because they just weren't taking nobody would buy them in the garden centers although two garden centers of note did pick them up or maybe even more uh, in ireland but a few picked them up in england and apparently they've got around the gardening clubs in england and oh. now the rhs have come back to me um, a we few want more. Months ago, and some of them may be getting an award of merit <gasps> in the RHS. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, so I, it's 10 years on. Well, I'm People thrilled that I have some them. then yeah. so of you, the family. You've got quite a few. Okay, uh, what are the other ones? It. You're going to show um, me. You have over there. This uh, or in Yeah, that's more any of these. Gall. This yeah. is this is Money Gall. Yeah, and you have another drum, drum cliff in And that's behind. a drum cliff in behind. In behind. Yeah. And okay. you have them quite a few years, and you have a little one here. We just tongue in cheek called Katie Daly. I brought you a few more. This one here. This one here. I we, love yeah, this, this one. This is actually really a wild primrose. It's no breeding whatsoever. This was one, the name we picked, this one here, yeah. is Katie Daly. The name that, the reason we picked the name was we had a really fantastic employee from West Cork uh, down in Leff called Anne Daly. Yes. And Anne told me that her aunt had a, a wild collection and they do primroses do go pink in the wild in the wild and they had a really nice uh, grove of them nearby 
so she brought me up a few so we brought them in and we put them into plant tissue culture and we produced them and i get some few Years ago, yeah, it is a few years ago yeah, at this stage. Yeah. And we had two of them, and you have the two of them together here. One we didn't continue with, it's that smaller little flowered one here. Okay. And if you notice, this one has a bigger flower. Yes. And this is the one we called Katie Daly. So come down so from the mountains. So there's two Katie different Daly. ones here. Yeah, the yeah, smaller two one a smaller and a bigger one. one. And a bigger flowered one. But both of them come from an actual wild, naturally occurring um mutation in the wild down in Leppin, west cork wow so, oh well, i'm frightened because i'd have two of them i probably fantastic. should separate them you out could separate them and they're very healthy they're well i found yeah. the right place absolutely, and i found this yeah. hellebore the which i absolutely no 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 well, i went and got this yeah. because it goes well with them yeah now we have some more here that you so gave me even more drum clips spread across here so these are more, more these dark cliff. ones yeah. are drum cliff, drum cliff and yeah. then that one's somebody else That's i think somebody else gave you okay that. Uh, and and then these ones look traditional um you have little variation there's on a, traditional yeah this that's one a, that's a very nice one these are more modern and bred when i say modern these ones 50s, 60s 70s yeah. well it would have to be 50s 60s 70s because yeah. those were 20 years ago given to me yeah. a small clump yeah, by my yeah. cousin mella yeah, yeah. and then these ones again a more modern versions there would probably be around the same era these ones started to appear in particular in some of the american societies oh um, interesting you had a there's a breeder called don o'keefe i've just given you um he's an american breeder i've just yeah. given you a few plugs oh let's look variety. at the ones let's you've just yeah. given me yeah so there's quite a few varieties of old traditional primroses okay so these are my new yeah, ones that new. i have well, to soak some of the same but here's two of note with scent okay so the leaves, oh they have the, smell yeah they have good scent and this is one from an Irish horticulturist called June Blake. She has oh, a I know. beautiful garden. Jimmy Blake um, sister, is yeah. Jimmy's sister. Correct. They have yeah, gardens yeah. next to each other. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so, so June, this is June, June Blake. June gave us that one and we propagated it. And that one went to the RHS trials now. With this one. Fingers crossed that it will get an award. Good. And then this is one from an American breeder called Don O'Keefe. Okay. Um, he didn't seem to have any Irish connection other than obviously the name O'Keefe is quite is Irish. Is Irish. My grandmother <laughs> was an O'Keefe. So, um, so this one. And is, this is again. This is again Katie Daly. Katie Daly, yeah. the Cork one. And you have one. an interesting little one here. Again, I like this white one. having a memory of a person yes. associated with a plant. So Katie Daly, as yeah. I told you, was from our former employee and then and she was a wonderful uh, and is a wonderful horticulturist and she brought us that up from her aunt's uh, garden it in. had gone wild from the fields into her garden oh fantastic this one as i told you is from an american breeder. breeder he was part of the american primrose society yeah and this one is from famous gardener june blake in in county in wicklow. wicklow and this little one is one called carrickdale and the reason it's got the name Carrickdale, it was from Joe Kennedy and Joe. Again, the same, same breeder. Joe, yeah, yeah. yeah, Joe was on Gardener's World. We got Gardener's World for the first time over to Ireland. I can't remember the year now, but they came over, they interviewed Joe and there was a beautiful little Wow, piece. I think it was nearly half an hour of a piece on Gardner's wow. Road with Joe. It was quite about the primulas. About his breeding of primrose and primrose. conserving the old Irish varieties, which we we have kept in circulation. And this one then popped up as a really, um, a really unusual one. Um, I put, um, I put it in there, yeah. yeah. So this one is, we call the Carrickdale and it's totally out of character with the rest of the premiers. This one creeps along the ground. It's kind of- Kind of like a ground it's cover premier. It's ground hugging alpine type appearance. Okay. And I couldn't think of a name and he had passed over the plants to me. We used to meet near the border sometimes. Yeah. And other times I'd go the whole way up to um up to Ballycastle. I used to go up once a year when we yeah. were selecting him. And ah. sometimes it was just too long of a journey and Joe and his son used to meet me halfway to pass over the goods yes. at the border. Yes. <laughs> so we used to meet in a little hotel called Carrickdale Hotel. Yeah. And this particular day that Joe was passing me over 
the prim primrose as I went primrose. into the hotel and he happened to be talking to Seamus Mallon at the same time. Seamus Mallon just coincidentally was in having his lunch at and the same time. And for those who don't know, Seamus Mallon is... He was a very what? famous uh, Northern Ireland um, politician. Him and John Hume would have been, you know, quite the, the centres of the peace process, process uh, yes. back then. Alas, both have, have passed away now. Yes. So that memory obviously, obviously stuck. So I said, right, let's call this one Carrigdale. And of course, Seamus Mallon being so famous in the peace process, the colour white obviously oh, for was, the piece was, was apt so that's actually the little contorted thought process that went into putting the name on that one and who's this, this one is that hasn't canadian. flowered this is a, i think it came from a canadian breeder who i don't know okay but it's one called francesca and francesca is interesting for one fact it's a green and light green flower and it's a hose and hose oh. type flower and it's the one of the latest of them flowering as, it, it, as in it's late in the season late in the season when it yeah, flowers yeah, it flowers just beginning now as you can see from the delicate little buds appearing and if you open them out you see it's a green flower so it's it's beautiful when it opens up fully and it's prolific unusual so worth oh worth keeping excellent in a collection. yes yeah so oh well that's, that's fantastic as long as oven mitt doesn't there are Walk thousands all across of them. different primrose varieties, but no. But it's good yeah. to um, carry on the Irish tradition of Irish primroses. Yeah, well, at one time in actually houses like your grandparents, this was a hobby. And, yeah, and that's where a lot of these came from, uh, from around the country. If you look, you, you probably won't find it online, but there's I have a collection of little booklets that Joe gave me on the history of primrose breeding in Ireland and it was back to Elizabethan times a hobby. Wow. And it's probably one of the most next to the rose, it's probably one of the most bred uh, garden plant uh, 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 species. And I suppose the good thing about it is they run with the season. So yes. they're not like the modern types where you get um yeah, you get out of season flowering and that spreads. But primrose has been used for thousands of years in all sorts of mythology. I mean, from the goddess Freya, it's the, the flower of the goddess Freya. And she was the goddess of fertility. And people used to tie little bunches of primroses on a cow's tail while it was in calf. As the flowers came, they would tie just before the cow calf. Because it would be in luck. spring and good, good luck. luck. Yeah, yeah. Very. there's a huge amount of primrose lore that just isn't out there. People don't really associate the fact that suddenly the garden centres fill up with primroses at a particular time in the year. Yes. Why? Yes. There is a reason nobody, or not nobody, but not many people realise we did it always. It was now always Now they're in little plastic pots and they're big flowers that look more like pansies rather than <laughs> primroses. But there is a logical reason for people wanting to have primroses in the spring. Their ancestors did the exact same thing. Um, oh, that's very, very it's, it's, interesting. If you put the two things together, maybe they have nothing to do with each other, but of course they do. That's how yes. the plant came into such high level of breeding these days. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I'm going to soak these guys. They, they're they a little bit thirsty. An interesting one on the primrose. Um, yeah. Um, um, the Botanic Gardens, I was at a lecture there a number of years. In which one? In Dublin, sorry. Okay. And um, he's now the curator there. And um, he had this little story, and Matthew Jeb. And yeah. I thought it, it, I keep remembering what he said about plants and how they spread around the world. And, you know, they manipulate people, not people manipulating plants. So if you think about the primrose, they've been bred and bred and bred. Their diversity is huge now compared to what it was a couple of hundred years ago. Yeah. And obviously... If you take Matthew Jeb's theory correctly, like some of the plants like cleavers, it sticks to your yes. clothes. Yes. Other plants have other ways of using humans, humans to, to move to move around. So the yeah. primrose is quite smart in that context as well. It's a very it's clever plant. To use hundreds and hundreds it of has. And yeah. but I am particularly fond of this one. I like and I love one. its yeah. story yeah. that it's yeah. cork and 
somebody that you worked with and that there's two of them. I hadn't, me in my numpty manner, hadn't realized that I had two different ones. There's two different. Uh, that there's the smaller yeah, one and the one bigger one. It grows a little bit too much as well. It's a bit greedy. It really grows like crazy in foliage, whereas the other one is a little bit sharper. And more yeah, subtle. More subtle. And which but one? A bigger flower. This one is the. This is the the line that we continued propagating because there wasn't much point in having the two. So, so this is yeah, the this small, is the larger, flower. the larger yeah, one. Those are little plugs, so they're, okay. they're not going to look as bright, and they need a little drop in of water. They well, they'll get a drop yes. in now, of if water. You watch, if you watch those, um, you might get some. They tend to seed quite well, so yeah. watch them. You might get some little fat seeds on them if they get pollinated. Ah. And you can save them and sow them, and you'll get other variations of pink, and you'll build up your own diversity on the farm here of what i have oh yeah, yeah. Ah, that's very good oh, well i love that but they're really nice varieties with and i love all the stories around the each is one really important as well the scent on those two in june blake's in particular. oh wow this red one has a lovely yeah, smell june blake's actually in particular is the highest scent level that i've found in any primrose so far and june did she breed it particularly for the scent june selected the plant from because june would always i'm sure be playing around with seedlings yeah. And, you know, the diversity of a line of seed is going to be such that there's going to be better and best in yeah. the seeding. So she would have selected one particular plant. We got one and we propagated it then clonally. So that yeah. means we retain that variety's yeah. traits and we multiplied it. And it's for sure the most prolific primula that we have in the collection. And it's the most scented primula that we have oh that's wonderful and also it's long flowering this will keep flowering for months so, so it's, it's a actually, so yeah. it's a really really good it's one a really to have good primrose to have yeah yeah